Welcome to another episode of Detection Engineering Dispatch. We're here in Austin this week following uh, such an incredible week at uh, in Vegas for, for Black Hat and DEF CON. And I got to tell you, we had the best of time uh, in all of the amazing parties that they always that they always come with. The Roblox had uh, a pretty stellar party. GuidePoint, our partner at GuidePoint, maxed out the marquee rooftop. Uh, they had a line out the door. Optiv booked Steve Aoki and the chandelier at the Cosmo just couldn't catch a break from vendors just just trying to go in and, and, and book it like crazy. Also can't forget the marketing uh, atrocities, right? Few folks won't name names, but uh, in hot water right now with their very uh, poor taste of of marketing choices that just screamed very violent levels of Mad Men and just, you know, and at DEF CON, we were actually there when somebody was dragged off the stage off one of the, the talk tracks, which was pretty interesting. Uh, but nonetheless, um, based on the amount of posts that uh, is kind of scattered throughout LinkedIn, it's safe to say that was pretty well covered. And a huge shout out to all of the men that spoke out on behalf of uh, what they saw and how long it was. And I can't tell you enough how much that means to a lot of people, to us, uh, when you see something and, and say something. But there's not more, much more to say on that, right? But what we do have to say uh, is something that I'm very particularly excited about to, and to make some noise on. And uh, especially right now with all of the really big changes that are happening uh, in the space in, in terms of how security teams are getting their data. And I want to talk about it with a very special Tech Alliance partner that we got to spend a lot of time with last week. And that is none other than a Cribble, a trailblazing startup, uh, fourth fastest, I think, company to reach 100 mil in ARR. Uh, lets you get your, your uh, data from A to B, just how you want it, where you want it. Uh, it's super, super easy to work with. Routable, it's scalable, it's flexible, all the things, right? Cribble, Cribble by default. So I'm joined with Jim Apker, our Tech Alliance's partner. You'll hear it first here today. All the reasons, both from a technical and business standpoint, why you should own your data pipeline, right? Because data collection wants to be freed, uh, point blank period. So Jim, Thank you for joining this episode. I always like to ask, um, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into the space uh, and what you do over at Cribble. Yep. So uh, first things first, dad joke, right? So this is how I roll. I just had <laughs> a frozen apple for breakfast. Hardcore. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. Apologies. Uh, but again, thank, thank you. I'm glad to be here. And uh, Alex, great energy level. Uh, looking forward to this. Uh, I've seen the episodes in the past and uh, I'm honored to be here. But uh, again, I'm at the uh, the Alliances team on uh, the Cripple side of the house. Originally an electrical engineering background. And when we think back, and this may be a stretch, you know, electrons our data um, as well, right? So ultimately, from the very beginning, I um, like to think that I've been focused on one form of data or another. And again, great past live in the sense that I get to uh, work closely with hundreds of customers in the SOC and really, um, I think, make a dent in terms of evolving the SOC and affecting people's lives with the creation of something that was called risk-based alerting or RBA. And Oh, I've heard of that. <laughs> I, I, get a, I get a little bit of that. Yeah, it, it's still around. And um, it, it was it was a combination of taking uh, techniques that were learned in the anti-fraud space and the anti-money laundering space and, and certainly engineering and folding those into kind of a two-pass scenario uh, within the SOC. And it was a ton of fun, but uh, I, I can't do a talk without mentioning attack at least 10 times, but uh, suffice it to say, I, I'm a big fan of the SOC, the people in the SOC, uh, you know, how we can realistically kind of look at the SOC from a real world perspective and do our best to make a difference in the SOC. And Alex, I'm gonna hold you to it. I hope you say attack at least three times as well. Oh, well, as long as it's not AI. <laughs> okay, no, nope, we're, we're good. We're good on that. Well, good. Jim, by way of agenda, then um, I uh, incredible, incredibly excited about this this episode and, and what we're doing with you guys. I mean, investors value Cribble at over two billion dollars because they know that security teams, in particular, I mean, as well as IT, DevOps, all the things, but security teams value optionality and specialization. And I think that's also what our partnership really represents here. And uh, Cribble has dominated the space with your your Cribble Stream product, which you'll see a little bit today. Uh, and so what we're going to do is 
talk about the problem at hand, right, of, of both owning your data pipeline addresses and how AVL or Anvil and Cribble are, are the painkillers there and how, how we support that, um, the benefits that come with owning your data pipeline, uh, and as well as a exclusive showcase of a integration that was just released while we were all at Black Hat. We made some noise with you guys there, uh, and we had a lot of fun showing that at the, at the booth, but you, you, you get to see it here today. So, Let's start with um, the goals, the problems, right? I always like to use this structure. It's so There's so much messaging out there that's confusing and it's just important to get out of the way. So in terms of the persona, right, of the content that this episode will be most valuable to, if you are a detection engineer, right, or a, you know, a CTI, a triage analyst, a data pipeline engineer, or titles aside, you have to build detections for your organization, right? Or maybe you have to tune them, right? Maybe you're, you're tuning detections others have built, or maybe you're not doing those things, but maybe you are trying to operate, you're doing the research aspect, operationalizing those TTPs and providing someone requirements to build those detections, or you are reporting on your team doing any of those things. If this is you, right, and you do this work, you're going to want to stay for the rest of this presentation, okay? Now, if this is you, right, and you are, as you're doing these things and you're looking a little bit like that, right, a little dude that's not, it's not really going so well, you're going to really want to stay, right, for the rest of this presentation. And that is because we find that uh, there's, there's a lot of problems involved with doing this kind of work, one of which is tedious AF to do. Right. But also uh, there's two, the second one, which is actually the greater of the two, and that is legacy sim walk-in. Right. Uh, and sin, that is because sin for a lot of us is our source of truth. And it's just not equipped, right, to handle the kind of volume that we're working with today. Uh, and, you know, with, with the scale and, and velocity and voluminous of data that is working, that we that we are, are seeing, but everybody knows that. I don't need to tell anybody that data is increasing year on year. But what is, has become abundantly clear is that this kind of architecture, right, this monolithic architecture is just not equipped to handle that kind of thing. It's just not cutting it anymore, okay? And uh, why is that? What do I mean when I refer to as a monolithic architecture? I mean a architecture, one such that all the collection, right, all of its storage, all of its compute, all of its analytics, and of course, detection engineering takes place in the same place, right? And the more that this makes it such that the more data goes in, the more expensive it gets, right? And the budget only goes so far. So some of the data is left out of the sim. And of course, we all know how that story ends, right? When you're not monitoring that. Now, in terms of the monolithic architecture, uh, this, a, a lot of historically, the security data pipeline, right, was just a piece of this uh, when we think about you know, the, the the pipeline aspect of it. And, you know, the pipeline and the tools that your SIM came with was kind of what you had, right, to collect your data. And that meant that if you wanted to change your SIM for whatever reason, your pipeline obviously had to change too, right? And that raises a huge level of effort, uh, such that if you ever found yourself in a situation where you wanted to uh, you know, get out of it and you realize, oh shit, my SIM actually sucks. It's not catching shit. And you want to move away from it. It that would be even more of a nightmare, right? And it would rarely happen. And a lot of it, sometimes it happens to know that it rarely ever happens. To, uh, and so that you're, you're, you're locked in and that's what we refer to as a as, as sim lock-in, right? And that's that's where the name came from, right? And it's we think it's holding you back, right? From using all of the data that you wish that you, that you could be. Uh, and, but now, you know, it, until now, I guess, <laughs> because what's happening is that security teams are waking up to the fact that you now have flexibility and control to send it somewhere else, send it to another location, right? Because before you weren't able to do that, if you wanted to send some of your data somewhere else, you couldn't, right? Because it was kind of only in stuck in your in in, in the sim monolithic pipeline, right? So. Um, what we're going to talk about is now all of the flexibility of being in, in freedom to be able to secure your own future and really mix and match uh, different data destinations. So this is, uh, listeners, the opportunity at hand, the concept of owning your data pipeline, right, and freeing your data be, will quite literally break free from the challenges, right, from uh, the sim lock and challenges that this architecture faces. Okay. So Tim, do you want to kind of go through those benefits and then I'll add color wherever it makes sense? Yep. 
Yeah. Okay. So the three benefits of owning your data pipeline. What are those? First one. I love this. This is near and dear to my heart, right? So when we think about what it takes to be uh, proactive in this in the SOC versus reactive, uh, I like the notion that you know our data is trying to tell us a story. Like it, it really is. You know, sometimes it's screaming at us, and it is. Um, it's a thing. Uh, sometimes you know there's, there are stories buried inside that data that that may take you know, days, weeks, you know, maybe even months to uncover, or it's a knock on the door from a third party that that, that gives us a clue. Um, that we're missing part of that story, and it's related to some of the stuff that you talked about uh, there uh, earlier, Alex. It's um, the fact that data is everywhere. Yeah, maybe it's not readily accessible. Maybe it's too expensive to ingest on maybe a legacy SIM. Um, maybe where it resides, it's not searchable. Um, with some of these legacy data lakes as well, or maybe it's not normalized, but ultimately, and again, I like this notion, we need to think about the problem such that we can best situate ourselves relative to the data such that we can tease those stories out of that mountain of data, right? When we, when we think about 28% compounded annual growth rate around data, like I encourage everybody to think about that or opportunistically, right? It's not just um, great, you know, 28% more um, you know, exponential scale. I think it's the wrong way to look at it, right? Because we have companies now that will do exactly that, that will best situate you relative to your data. And that's exactly what Cribble does. It's the right data delivered in the right format to one or more destinations to ensure that you're best situated in your relative data. But at the same time, um, when that data goes where it needs to go, we now have modern platforms like the uh, like the multi-platform SIM that Anvil Logic uh, has put together, which you know, those two combined, I think are the best of both worlds in terms of at least operationalizing SIM uh, as efficiently as you can just right out of the gate. Absolutely. I mean, if the data is left out, you, you can't really read it, right? You, you can't secure what you can't see. You can't protect what's not there, right? So uh, the data this now with owning your data pipeline and 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 having you know decoupling the data pipeline outside of the sim allows you to route that data to a much more affordable location, right? If you can't afford to put it in the sim today, you can instead put it in a cheaper S3 bucket, for example, or uh, a Snowflake tenant, right, which is ninety percent cheaper in our customers' experience, right? Illuminating the the dark data previously untapped, right? And if you can run threat detection on top of that, even better. But it does let you at least read it, right, by routing the data uh, to another location, right, when you decouple that that pipeline. Because, uh, yeah, your data is trying to tell you a story, and, and it's something maybe a real damn good one, right? So next one. So one of the pillars that, that we lead with at Cribble is – you know, this notion that we afford customers you know, freedom of choice and flexibility when it comes to IT and security use cases. And this is very you know, anti-vendor, you know, lock-in kind of kind of stuff. But um, I do believe that this is what both Kribble and Logic, you know, fundamentally stand for. And I think it's why the partnership is so much more interesting you know, than many of the partnerships that uh, that exist in security. And because we're vendor neutral regarding customer choice, uh, it doesn't matter to us who you choose from an analytics um, perspective. You know, hopefully it's it's a migration from legacy analytics towards cloud native analytics or analytics that afford you the opportunity you know, to search data where it lies. You know, so that's choice number one. But it's also you know, this license to rethink really through what you were doing with a data lake in the past. Um, so again, it's, it's customer choice. We're happy to send that data, uh, that IT and security data, you know, into a data lake, uh, structure it such that it's searchable. We're, we're happy to uh, you know offer a data lake in the cloud. We're also happy to um, help you search that data because that's always been one of the, the challenges where you send data to these legacy data lakes. It's where data goes to die, right? Um, we need better ways to actually search that data and it needs to be somewhat powerful. So um, and again, you know, AnvilLogic mentioned this before. And it's really important to note that, um, you know, the first multi-platform SIM in that cyberspace. And I do think that that message, you know, is going to shape things because again, that, that's um, freedom of choice from customer in terms of where they put that data. And, and again, it's, it's all about vendor login. A hundred percent. Taking control of your own data strategy means con control over the data flow, the locations, the transformations, the storage. And that is one that allows you to have the flexibility to adapt to your business as it grows, uh, as it changes, and the threat landscape as it grows, as it changes, because boy, does it change and does it grow, right? And so if you take that, you know, into your own hand, it's it, you're in a far better position, right, to protect your organization, right? Just the same way I'm in, I'm be better positioned to protect my own house. I know where everything is. I know where all the doors are. And I know how, what I need to do to change it, right? Versus just getting it fed, this is this is what you have to work with. Here's 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 how it goes. Um, so uh, control your data strategy. Don't let your vendor control it uh, for better better downstream benefits. So last one uh, before we jump into how to see a lot of this uh, in action. Modernizing. Yep, this is a big one, um, and maybe for not so obvious reasons. But you know, I encourage everybody to think of. 
Cribble as your data engine for IT and security. What we're essentially doing is you know, decades of you know tech debt you know, has led to this you know, brittle collection of you know plumbing components throughout the enterprise to deal with things like syslog servers. Um, Windows event forwarders, aggregators, collectors, um, whether it's Lambdas or Linux scripts that are scheduled to interact with third-party APIs, you know, ultimately this is all data. And many of these things require, you know, single UI for, for each one of these. So many organizations have a thousand plus, um, you know, syslog servers that are out there that, that need to be individually configured. And then more importantly, and more painfully, you know, individually upgraded. And it's really important that, um, you know, we think through, you know, can we actually optimize, you know, that, that monster kind of complex you know, ingest into your analytics platform um, by essentially leveraging Cribble as a single console to replace all of that overhead. That single console is going to allow us to send um, copies uh, of security relevant data and security relevant platforms. Same thing with long-term retention. And again, it's important to note that this is all managed through a single um, user interface. It's all GitOps backed, you know, upgrades, everything can happen through that one big push. But the, again, the piece that's maybe not so obvious to a lot of folks is, you know, what we're doing is really optimizing infrastructure costs, replacing lots of that brittle infrastructure, uh, you know, it wasn't purpose-built, maybe it's not a highly performant, but at the same time, we're offering up the enterprises the opportunity to repurpose, you know, some of these folks that maybe don't get a fair shot uh, or a fair shake at things, repurpose some of these folks in the SOC who are stuck, um, stuck in plumbing, right, where they could be afforded the opportunity to do more proactive things, you know, in a SOC, like maybe threat hunting or adversary simulation, and hopefully that keeps them happier, longer, forwards them through their cyber career, and ultimately prevents churn for the enterprise. So I think it's Wonderful. the best of both worlds, but again, that, that's one of these really interesting concepts, this modernization that happens typically alongside a migration or augmentation or move from one sim to the next. I think you brought up a good point, um, because nobody wants to do this kind of work. It's so cumbersome. It's so it's so manual. It sucks. It's shitty, right? You want to be doing meaningful work, right? And if it makes, then if it just makes things better for everyone. Uh, but worth adding, I think, when you touched on the migration piece, if you ever did want to migrate Sims, because right, your Sim isn't cutting any, cutting it anymore, it's not catching shit. Like if you wanted to, you could help with the migration aspect of it transfer all of the data to wherever you need it to be in its new home right it, it doesn't force you to because obviously it doesn't force you to use your sims pipeline be in and all of the work of removing agents and starting over right that almost makes you not want to want not want to do that and hence you know there hence the lock-in um so it helps you really get out of that situation right so you can move your data to its new home better faster easier um and and you know X, Xing canceling out the security plumbing work. So um, I think we can pop on over to our our demo track. Um, what we we can do, uh, Jim, maybe you can show Cripple Stream and uh, go through the particular scenario of yep. uh, you know configuring a Windows Edge, uh, you know telemetry, configuring a Linux box, showing how Cripple can easily you know install an agent, route it to wherever you need to. In the case in this scenario, what we're going to show is Cribble routing to uh, a Snowflake environment with uh, an Anvilogic S3 as a staging, right? But again, it doesn't have to be to Snowflake. It can be one of our many other supported data platforms. So this in this particular example, we're going to route Windows and Linux data over to uh, Snowflake so that it's ready to, uh, it's ready in the, in the right format for us to use it for threat detection. And then we'll uh, we'll jump in to exactly how we do that. Yeah, but just a quick note too, on the left-hand side of the screen there, I believe this is the same demo that we used uh, for Black Hat uh, in your booth there. And what we do have, and it's very easy to do. I think I worked with uh, somebody on the, uh, the Anvil side and we uh, spun up a Windows server and a Linux server. And then within the Anvil Logic Cribble Stream cloud instance, which is again, free to set up, we, within the span of five minutes, deployed an agent to each one of those. So I'll, I'll take you the agent and show you how the config works. But the agents in terms of best practice, um, we'll, we'll typically send to a Cripple Stream instance in the middle there. And then that Cripple Stream instance is in charge for aggregating and routing that data into that S3 bucket. And I'll show you what it looks like on our side. And then I think Alex is going to pick it right up, um, show you what that configs look like. And then we're going to give you a tour of the Anvil interface as well. So I will share here in just a second. Here we go. So again, um, one user interface for all of our uh, 
top four products there. We'll start with Cribble Edge up top. We'll note we've got a couple fleets that are built. Um, we, we manage these configs you know, in these containers that we call fleets. And in this case, if I take a look within that Windows fleet, I've got the one device that has one agent there. It's as simple as just saying, I've got a new Windows box. Let me you know, add that. It's going to give you a PowerShell command uh, or, or an execution um, to actually run on that Windows box. And one side note too, with, with Edge, it's, it's also interesting because it's not just about forwarding logs. Um, we can use search to, to ping Edge, but we can also teleport down into the actual Windows device to explore processes and files and network and run things, you know, at the edge. But in this case, we're really just interested in, you know, that Windows device, you know, as a whole, being able to take a look at the different sources that we can manage on that Windows device. So we are going to collect event logs in PowerShell, and it's just a matter of configuring what we want that fleet to do, how we want it to collect it. And I think more importantly, if we go back to our destinations, we're going to send all of that data, you know, into an actual Cribble TCP connection. And that's our connection back into Cribble stream. And let's see. So another way to look at that is we're going to pick our data sources. We can configure them from here as well. And then it's just a matter of taking, you know, Windows logs, you know, Linux logs, same thing, just routing them directly into Cribble TCP. So in this case, it's just the Windows fleet. And once we're receiving that data in Cribble stream, we can take a look at our default worker group over here. So stream is all about sources, destinations, and then connecting them with routing. So you can see lots of different sources. Think of these as out-of-the-box transport mechanisms. And in this case, we're, we're just receiving data on that HTTP listener over there. So we've got inbound connections coming through our TCP connection. We've got destinations. So again, transports. Alex set up and she's going to show you how this actually works. A couple destinations, S3 buckets for us to write to. In this case, it's really simple, right? We're just going to point it at the bucket. We're going to partition just a bit. The speed search up, keep it separate from the other data sources in there. We've got tokens under the authentication mechanism. And then again, it's just about connecting things via routing. In this case, I am writing to two different directories on the same bucket. And one of the things that I'll do is since I'm receiving all of that data from presumably multiple fleets um, at that single TCP um, interface on our stream devices. I did put pipelines in here. So there's a Linux only pipeline and a Windows only pipeline that basically will not send Linux data in this case to our Windows directory. We're not going to send Windows data to our Linux directory. And that's it. That's all we're doing with Cribble Stream. It's probably the best time for me to hand it off to Alex and let's take a look at the brand spanking new integration we couldn't be happier about and hopefully you'll say attack 10 times. Amazing. Thanks for, thanks for showing us your setup, Jim, because uh, yep. obviously if we don't get the data out, there's not much we can do with it. So it's a fundamental aspect of, of what we do. Uh, and so what you'll have the opportunity to do is very exclusive freebie for our uh, the participants of Dispatch today. If you scan this QR code, you can actually follow along with me on an interactive product tour of exactly this integration. So feel free to to, to uh, scan this. It'll be available for a couple of weeks. Uh, and so you see for, you know firsthand yourself uh, exactly how we, we're going to go about this new product integration release. So I'll keep it here for just another few seconds and then get into our setup. Okay. So um, let's go dive into the demo because once we're here, once you scan the QR code, you'll be taken to our uh, our product here. Uh, and as far as Cribble Stream, if you pop on over to our settings, with this new Cribble Stream integration, you know, you're able to ingest essentially any log source into uh, Snowflake right now, but of course, one of one of many available uh, supported data platforms in the future, you'll see this super easy guided wizard that will automate all of the normalization, the staging, the parsing, right? Uh, get it all ready in the proper format where it's nice and clean and ready for threat detection queries, right? Our threat detection content to be ran on top of that data platform, right? Again, in this particular scenario is Snowflake, but many, many more repos uh, to come. So here you could see the configuration, right? The very easy setup if you click next. It'll just indicate all of these different fields, right? The proper tables, the, uh, the custom tagging. Here is the, uh, if I wanted to name this integration name, if I wanted to specify what table I want, the format of this telemetry, and then of course the ability to tag in this case, as Jim mentioned, it was PowerShell logs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so once we add it, uh, it will give the authentication necessary to provide the staging, you know, the staging um, parts of it, completely automating all of the uh, extra, you know, infra work, 
right? And it'll allow you to get started to quickly route that data, that Windows telemetry over to Snowflake, right? Uh, this, you know, makes you skip through all of the expensive uh, infra, new forms, right? Lifecycle main, like maintenance of, of things that are typically uh, common with this kind of pipeline work, all super simple, all very quickly in a matter of two, uh, less than two minutes there. So um, you could see the active Cribble Stream Linux and Windows event data feeds there, right? Uh, configured. And so now ready for us to obviously provide uh, our, 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 our thing, right? Our threat detection content, of course, very, very fundamentally first um, dependent on that data to be in there in the first place. Now, what we're going to do is take a step on over to our Anvilogic Armory. This is where we are investing heavily into our threat research, right? Our uh, purple team is building a bunch of threat detection content aligned to MITRE, aligned to threat actors, but also for specifically, you know, the, the, this, this these types of platforms, right? This platform coverage here, right, where we've configured uh, the Windows data, the Linux data, and we've got you covered in terms of protecting activity that occurs within those OSs. If we select that platform coverage, you can see that it will filter uh, by Linux and by Windows what exactly we have in terms of use cases uh, in for those relevant platforms. You see all of the enrichment and tagging that we do uh, into our, our techniques, into our uh, detections, right, is going to help you target exactly what uh, what is relevant to you, right? What coverage gap that you need. And from any one of these that you see here, you'll be able to copy them into what we call your workspace, deploy it immediately to those devices, right? And immediately start at an optimal frequency that you choose, and it will immediately start securing those platforms, right? But um, a way to always stay on top of, a better way to do it, to always stay on top of the latest TTPs and threat actors uh, that hit the headlines, always on the homepage at the very top, right? You'll always get the very latest of uh, reports, right? Consolidated from uh, some kind of a cyber threat intelligence company that is, it usually takes around hours and hours to consume, to operationalize right back into the company. We'll give you a quick summary and go as far as mapping the detections, right? That uh, are going to protect you against the TTPs and behaviors observed with this given threat, right? With the cyber criminal misuse of cloud for tunnels, for example, as you can see, it it's, uh, was released very, very recently. And we're, when we're piping out this content weekly. Um, so what's in here? You've got the uh, Anvilogic detections in the form of uh, these two elements, a threat identifier and a threat scenario. What are these, Alex? Well, threat identifiers are uh, some of those discrete single events, right, that happen, right, in that Windows, in the, in the as Windows activity, right, like a Python execution or a hidden file or folder that was identified, a web request and that was invoked, right? Things in that you may not necessarily want to be notified of every, th every time that they happen, but this is where threat scenarios come into the picture. Uh, this is the ability to chain, right? When these kind of things, this, these discrete events happen across multiple sequences, right? Acro upon correlated entities, with those abilities to chain them together, right? Chaining those identifiers, the Python execution, a C script execution, followed by a certain period of time uh, with a bypass, with a hidden file folder, right? This is when this work gets meaningful and interesting and provides a higher fidelity alert versus uh, you know, inundating you with these uh, single kind of requests that may be very legitimate, right, to begin with. So that very is- Very cool, by the way. Very cool. Yeah. Love it. Um, technique detections by themselves can be noisy, but again, they're there to oftentimes tell a story. And I think tying those together, in this case, by host is absolutely critical. So yeah, I love it. We have a ton of properties that uh, we can chain together. It could be like a cloud resource account, a cloud user, uh, a uh, an IP, like all of this means so much more when it's done across these threat scenarios. Yep. So that is all that we've uh, prepared for this uh, the, today's episode. Before we jump into Q and A, uh, if anybody has any Q and A, Jim, I want to thank you for such an incredible partnership. That is this partnership between Cribble and Anvil Logic. We're very very excited about everything that you guys are doing. 
we couldn't be more grateful to partner with you on our initiatives. Likewise, it's a really interesting time in security. And I think uh, I think companies like ours that stand for freedom, choice, and flexibility are, are going to do extremely well. Absolutely. But, uh, data data collection wants to be free. The pie, it's a new it's a new wave of security. And I think more and more uh, teams are starting to open up and wake up to that fact as well. All right. So at this point, I'm going to we're going to take some Q&A. Uh, so. Does anyone in the audience want to come off mute and ask Jim a question here or Alex? That you, Cam. <laughs> we have a we have a question from Srina. Go ahead. Oh, thank you for the demo. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, does Scribble also coming into uh, SaaS space, especially if we want to integrate SaaS vendors into Anvil Logic? And um, we are getting, you should f focusing more on Windows, Linux and containers, but I'm just curious about uh, if we have to cover some threads from SaaS specifically, uh, how does um, Cribble is thinking about on those lines and and how Env Envilogic is also thinking on those lines? Yeah, I mean, you're referring to um, like, like best of breed SaaS vendors, like dealing with that data? Cause... Yeah, I mean, there are a few yeah. vendors out there specifically for App Omni, but also if you think about direct integration with some of the SaaS vendors, sure. like M365, um, any of those uh, like uh, Workday mm -hmm. or Snowflake. Yep. Yeah, so definitely. Um, you know, so SaaS is a big deal. We, we made that a big deal this year and over the last six months. We've made a lot of um, progress in terms of ramping up what we do. And, and the notion is that as the attack service continues to get more complex, more customers are going to invest in uh, SaaS-based vendors because that's what they do, especially in cloud. Those SaaS-based vendors, you know, those portals will essentially have your data in their portal for X amount of time, whether it's 90 days or maybe up to a year in an extreme situation. Yeah, but in that case, there, there are typically two use cases. I mean, these companies need to get that data you know, out of that portal and into your, your SIM tool for detections and uh, user and, and machine context. But also oftentimes it's for compliance. So we're actually seeing a big giant push into that. One of the better examples um, that I've got for right now, it's because I was personally involved in all of that and it's doing really well is like Wiz. It's a great cloud-based company, but that data needs to get pulled out of that portal. So we built a connector um, specific to Wiz that pulls the data out of that portal and moves it somewhere else. But we also have a generic REST-based portal that's fairly complex that can, for, for most vendors, can get whatever you need from that portal and make it really easy to put it again into one or more destination platforms. So that's going to continue um, you know, as as time goes on. Just make sure that, um, that, that we know what it is that you're asking for. We pull our field quite often in terms of what customers are asking for. And our goal is to either create a brand new transport, if it's, if it's vendor-specific, or We'll take one of the existing generic transport transports and then we'll fine tune it for that vendor and then we'll brand it and get that out of the box. And ultimately it's just about speeding up time to deploy for RSEs, for partners, for customers, for PS, for everybody else. Got it. Do you have any specific SaaS vendors uh, connected today, either Obsidian or App Omni? Hmm. Cam, do we have an App Omni in there today? Do you know? Yes, we do. We actually do support App Omni and we actually partner with them. Um to be able to pull data from Got there in the service. All right, great, thank you, thank you. Yeah, good question though, thanks. It's, it's an important point uh, for vendors moving forward. Absolutely, thank you for the question. I think uh, you guys opening up so many different locations and ra a range of sources and destination is is really uh, such a great thing for, for this movement, especially when if, if you're in considering moving away from what you have, right? Before it was a very daunting task to move away Sims because it was so it was included the, the pipeline was included in the set and it almost never never made you want to want to move away so now that's uh that's not the case anymore any other questions all right all right then i think we can wrap up then again thank you jim for for coming on on the episode you're always welcome to come back and, and return and share more ground waking way groundbreaking ways that uh we're helping folks so uh, stay tuned for our uh, following episode. We're going to have Rebecca Blair from Toast, author of Aligning Your Operations to Miter Attack. Uh, we're going to be going all in on insider threats. Uh, also, another another episode in the lineup on critical system monitoring by uh, our VP of product, Mackenzie Kyle. Uh, that's also coming very, very soon. So uh, I'll see you guys all in our next episode. And I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend.